consumers with credit cards are also advised to pay down their debt as much as possible, as soon as possible. And that comes from the Fed themselves, not from anybody else, from the Feds. We just have to make sure that we are not walking around with blinders on. We are preppers and we're here to ensure that our families are taken care of. And that is the most important thing. And that's why if you're a prepper, you're prepping for either yourself or your family and maybe other family members that choose not to prep. Because we all know in push comes to shove in a, in a, you know, a grid down type situation, an SHTF situation, whatever, you ain't got to turn your back on your brother or your sister, your parents, your grandparents. Although if your grandparents are so alive, they're probably more prepped than you are because they've probably been doing it for a long time. It was just a fortune nature back then. But the thing of it is, you just got to make sure that you keep those blinders off. You pay attention to what's going on. And if we do that, we'll all get to do this together. You know, th things aren't uh, looking too good for the good old dollar bill here. Your, your money is uh, windling away. The rates this week, inflation rates, um, the wholesale rate went up 11.3%. Regular inflation jumped again in June on a persistent climb. I mean, it's just going up and up and up, folks. Uh, basically, it was on gas prices, uh, food, and like your rent costs, your housing costs. Uh, gas has started to come down very slowly. Um, but, <laughs> you know, at least it's going down and not up. Uh, I believe the national average is somewhere in like the 460s or something like that. Uh, here in Florida, it's dropped quite a bit. We're rated down around the $4 mark, anywhere between, I have seen a station with $399 up to about $429. So it just depends on where you're at in central Florida here. With the whole inflation rate, you know, it's, it's it notched another 40-year high and likely nailing the Federal's Reserve plan for another big rate hike coming up in uh, two weeks. Um, it's looking like they're, they're, they're really going to raise it this time, folks. I mean, I'm going to explain to you here in a minute what it means for you and how much it goes up and what it does affect on the federal rate. Uh, the price increased 9.1% from a year earlier, up from an annual rate of 8.6% just last month in June. And it was the largest gain since November of 1981. Um, we're breaking all kinds of records here in the wrong direction. We need to get this under control and we need to figure something out really quick because um, this is going to turn into a recession if they don't do something soon. Um, they are trying to ring it in with these ray hikes. I don't know if that's going to be enough. And I think, and I fear that it's going to push a lot of things way out of the reach from a lot of people. All these people, I guess, put their heads together and they thought it was all going to come up to about 8.8%. So it was like 8.6 last month, 8.8 .8 this month. Well, then it came in at 9.1, which, you know, boy, were they wrong. And, you know, I mean, you're trying to predict, you know, the future here, what is going to take place and how much things are going to cost and everything else. And that is the scary part of this whole scenario. I'm going to get in towards the end of this video about what we can do to try to save ourselves uh, from a lot of heartache, a lot of grief. On a monthly basis, consumer prices increased 1.3%, the largest such leap since 2005, uh, compared with a 1% rise since May. Um, unfortunately, this report does bolster the Federal Reserve's plan in two weeks to raise the key interest rate by a hefty one full percent. It was going to do a three-quarter percent. Uh, but because 
it came in at the regular inflation rate came in at 9.1% and the wholesale rate came in at 11.3%. They're now they're discussing a full percentage rate hike. Uh, Gas prices are going down for the simple fact is people can't afford to go anywhere. They can't afford to drive and everything else. So people just are staying home. But this has set the stage for more moderate food price increases within the months to come because of more people are staying home, more people are eating, more people are not driving around or going out to eat. And, you know, it's a two-edged sword. Now, I want to explain to you real quick so everybody understands what this will do, this rate hike. For every quarter percent, that the feds raise the rates, the benchmark interest rate, all right? It translates into $25 a year in interest on a $10,000 debt, on like your credit card, um, that kind of stuff, all right? The feds short-term rates affect a variable rate debt. That means credit cards, home equity lines of credit, adjustable rate mortgages, which is the arm, and your auto loans. You have to really sit back and think, folks, where is this country going? And that's going to lead me to my ending point here is what we have to do. Okay, folks, you need to listen and you need to listen up really close. All right, because this is what we have to do in order to survive this crazy storm that's going to be blowing in that's already started. The front's already pushing in. So we have to get ready as much as possible now. Number one, if you are working, you need to try to make sure you're trying to pay down some of your credit card debts as fast as possible. I'm not saying you have to take all your money and pay down everything. I'm not a financial advisor. All right. I'm just advising you try to pay down some of your credit cards as much as possible. This way here, maybe it won't hit you as hard when these next rate hikes go in. And if it is the one full percent, because they haven't quite said that yet, but they have hid around that. And there's several of them that have hinted around that particular topic. But this way here, maybe it'll try to save you some money. If you're looking to buy a car, if you're in that process right now, you want to make sure that that is a done deal or you're locked into a rate before they meet at the end of the month. It's just a a really scary situation. Then you want to concentrate on your food prices. They're already saying food prices are going to keep rising this year, folks. So not going to go down. Don't expect it. All right. The only way you're going to get some deals is if you catch some sales, catch your flyers, download apps. If you have a smartphone, download the store's apps around you so you always get what's going on, what's on sale, and maybe where you can get some great buys and try to save yourself money that way. But don't hold your breath on any of the food prices going down because they're already saying by the time we get to the end of this year, they're going to be up 8 5 to nine, five percent higher than what they are right now. Food prices are going to go up. Gas prices are coming down. We can't win, right? I mean, we can't have both. You know, it's like, it's like you can't have your cake and eat it too. You know what I'm saying? But we can take and start prepping and make sure that you are putting away as much food as you possibly can. Uh, you want to make sure that you're putting away things that will last for a long time period of time. Now, I'm not talking freeze-dried foods here. I'm talking your canned goods, canned meats, uh, canned vegetables, uh, your dry goods, you know, your pasta, rice. Rice is a big one. Flour, sugar, yeast, all that type of stuff, spices and everything else. And if you can buy a little extra here or there to try to put those away, to try to give you a little buffer, if the If the crap hits the fan here, folks, you know, and something happens, say you lose your job or whatever else, at least if you know you have a two week supply of food or a month supply of food or whatever it may be, 
you know, you got something to fall back on is you don't have to worry about at that point in time. And maybe it'll buy you a little time to give you time to think that, you know, what do I do now? How am I going to get out of this hole? I need a job. Where am I going to go? And so on. It's one last thing you have to worry about. And that's what is the best thing about being a prepper is you prep for the unknown. And then when the unknown happens, you're not so stressed because you know you're prepped and you're ready. You may not use your preps today. You may not use your preps tomorrow. You may not even use your preps for the rest of the year. You may not use your preps for the next two years. But all it takes is one little bump in the road. And if you have those to fall back on, you will thank yourself for doing or whoever was doing the prepping in your home, because I know not everybody does together, you know, but somebody will be thanking somebody that they are very thankful that at least they know they have food on the table. And more than likely you have a lot more other supplies also that you may not have to worry about. Point being here is don't worry about what everybody else is saying. You do what you got to do, you get prepped, you get ready, you make sure your family's taken care of, you start paying down some of your bills if you can, all right? Now, don't go hog wild, don't kill yourself. I'm just trying to give you some help in what you need to be doing. And this way here, maybe when these rate hikes start coming in, because don't forget, it ain't the only one. Come September, they're already talking about raising it three quarters of a percent. We're basically on our own here, folks. And that's how I look at it. Because if that wasn't the case, we wouldn't be in this boat. <music>